Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Daniel started his pursuit of the Lord from a very, very early age. And I love this scripture because I am a person of routine. Is anyone else out there a person of routine? I like routine. My alarm goes off at the same time and it's never an even number. It's 841. I don't do 840. I don't even know why. Unless I'm feeling crazy one day, I'll set it for 840. I like routine. I'm telling you, like, it's just, I order the same thing at restaurants. Like, I, I don't know why I even look at the menu because I typically just get the same thing anyway. I like my routine. I like it just the way it is. And when I read this, I was like, oh, that's so awesome because Daniel, it says, you know, at, from an early age, he started praying three times a day. So again, I love routine. I love tradition. I love, I just, I, I just love all those things. I know my family is like huge in tradi- into tradition. We have all of our family traditions that we have. I mean, it's literally been the same thing since I was born. Our family gets together. I mean, it could be like President's Day and my family's like, we have to have lunch together. Like we get together for everything. And it's like Christmas, it's at 12 p.m. And for some reason we get together again at 6 p.m. This, and this isn't just like my family of five and spouses. This is like the whole extended family, right? But we have had that all my entire life. I don't even know when they started it because it was before I was born. But what's awesome about routine and tradition is it's already in my schedule. I don't have to say like, ooh, well, what should we do on Christmas? And how do we accommodate this family and this family? Because my family just has the same thing every year. So it's not like, well, yours decided to do it this and mine decided to change it this year to this. But it all fit into this schedule. Another thing that we did was birthday money showers. Have I ever talked about this before? I don't know if I have, but it was like the greatest thing in the world is they would give us money for our birthday. This is like when we were younger. It changed when I started wanting things and then I get things now like a leather jacket or something like that. But it all started with money showers and it was on your birthday morning. You would sit in the chair in the middle of the living room living room, and however much money it was for that age, they would get it in all dollar bills and you would sit there and they're like, happy birthday. Pour the dollar bills over you. I don't even know. I don't even know like where it came from, but that we like, that was like our birthday money shower. And like, dare, how dare you give me a $20 bill? Like I need 21s and they need to fall and rain on me like for my birthday, right? So, <laughs> make it rain. Yeah, right? I don't, and like I said, I don't know where it, came from. And then our family also, our immediate family, we did uh, family night. It was every Monday. But again, this worked well for me because then there was no question about like, can I do this tonight? Or I accidentally forgot something because it was so routine and so tradition that in my natural life, this really helped me. So one great thing about it is if you have routine like Daniel did, you can kind of like, who's not routine like? Is there any, oh man. I get like, I get anxious just looking at the hands being raised. But one awesome thing about routine is that you don't forget to speak to the Lord. You don't forget to pray. You don't forget your alone time with the Lord because a lot of times what happens is we Sunday starts and it's like, oh, I'm going to do alone time here. And then we are all out of whack. And then all of a sudden it gets Sunday again. It's like, oh my, oh my gosh, I forgot to pray. Or I forgot my alone time with God. Or I forgot that I was going to, you know, pray for this or pray for this. So Daniel from a very young age started his routine of praying three times a day. And because he had his routine, he was not gonna let any decree get in the way. He wasn't gonna let getting thrown into the lion's den get in the way. He said, I don't care what you say. I don't care what decree you wanna put out. I'm gonna praise and worship my God. I'm gonna, he opened his window. It's not like he like went in a corner and was like, I'm gonna pray and no one's gonna find me. He opens his window and he's like, I don't even care who hears me because this is something that I'm not ashamed of and this is something that I'm gonna do. So we're living in a crazy, crazy world right now. There's a lot of craziness going on and things that you never think are gonna happen to your life happen and it's just a crazy time that we live in. But I'm thinking that it's time 
See, many times when um, hard situations arise, we kind of want to just stand to the sidelines and move, a li- move on the side and just be like, well, I mean, I'm a Christian, but I don't have to like tell everyone I'm a Christian or I serve God, but I don't need to tell everyone that I serve God. I'm just going to go to school and I'm not going to wear my, how, live my, how we live matters. I'll wear it to 412, but there ain't no way you'll find me wearing that at school or work or whatever. And it's kind of like we live our life with God under the radar. As long as I can just coast by and no one knows, it's just going to be me and God and it's all great. <sighs> I told you I got a new computer. I don't know why my texts keep popping up. That's weird, because like, I didn't even get a text on my phone. (laughs) Yes. So, all that to say is we're living in a world right now where to be a Christian and to stand up for being a Christian is a huge deal. How many of you guys heard about the shootings in Oregon? All this talk about how they ask people, are you a Christian? It's like you had to decide then and there. And so many people say, oh, if someone asked me, you know, if they had a gun to my head and asked me if I was a Christian, I would for sure say yes. When you really think about that, I don't know, not you, just if you as in general would really say yes, because that's a scary, 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 scary thought. So here, I want to read you something that I found. It is a quote from someone um, who was unfortunately a part of what happened in Oregon. This is her quote. He started asking people one by one what their religion was. Are you a Christian? He would ask them. And if you're a Christian, stand up. They would stand up and he said, good, because you're a Christian, you're going to see God in just about one second. And then he shot and killed them. That's crazy. So basically, that's the kind of stuff that Daniel and the lion's end, normally a a lion would eat you and you would die. That's the kind of stuff that goes on in the world. And I watched one of the videos about it and a bunch of the girls who were being interviewed from the school who were like around it, where they were just saying, oh, we live in such a small town and we never thought that anything like that would ever happen to us. And as young people, we think, I'm invincible. Nothing like that would ever happen to me. I go to the mall. No one would ever do that in the mall. Or I go to school or I go to my work and nothing like that's ever going to happen to me. But I'm telling you, we live in a crazy time. And to say, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. Because you can say God, but the word Jesus is like even more that you can't say. I know someone who's teaching at a school now and she's not allowed, literally not allowed to use the word Jesus. Again, all that to say, we're living in a crazy world, but we can never stop the pursuit. No matter what's going on around us, we have to keep persevering. persevering. We have to keep that window open like Daniel did, not be ashamed of what we believe and not hide in the corner and just be passive about being a Christian and loving God, but really saying, I love him. And no matter what cost that comes with, I'm still going to profess that I'm a Christian. Daniel 1.8 says, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which they drank, before he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. What's the difference of purposing in your heart to not defile yourself and just hoping you don't defile yourself? Well, I think about... I'm constantly trying to eat healthy, as you just saw me eat a cookie before I came in here. I try to eat healthy, but eating healthy and showing up somewhere where there's going to be, you know there's a ton of junk food, and you show up starving is kind of like setting yourself up for failure, right? But if you have purposed in your heart to eat healthy, and you know you're going somewhere where there's a lot of junk food, you would maybe eat before you went, right? Right? Well, maybe if I'm full, bring a water to like sip on the whole time. So while everyone's stuffing their faces, you can feel like you're stuffing your face. Maybe bring a nice healthy snack in the side, right? So that's my two different examples of purposing in your heart. One is kind of just setting yourself up, setting yourself up for failure. The other is purposing in your heart. I'm not going to eat healthy. So I'm going to plan ahead to make sure that I don't eat healthy. So that's the difference. When you have a plan, things actually get done. Our natural plans, again, maybe putting a note in your phone or adding something in the calendar. How many of you, I know someone who's very close to me has a to-do list and even the to-do list is to make a to-do list. Does anyone have a to-do list out there? 
It's when you have a plan though, you get things done. So same in our natural life, if we wanna get things done, we have to have that same plan in our spiritual walk and in our walk with God. We have to purpose in our hearts that we are not defiled. We live in the world. You can't just seclude yourself from the world and say, I don't wanna sin, so I'm just gonna sit in a little box my entire life, and if I need food, I'll just call someone and have them like slide it in the box, right? We live in the world. So what we have to do is we have to enter into the world with a plan. We have to purpose in our hearts, I'm not going to sin, I'm not going to defile myself, and I'm gonna make a plan to make sure that I don't fall into something that I know that I don't really want to fall into. So if we have this plan for our walk with God, what are some things that we may do? Okay, well, if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, it would be like saying, well, my parents are gone, so I'm going to have you over. I have the house to myself. Then you go in the basement where no one is and it's really dark or everyone's sleeping, whatever it may be. Then you watch a movie and then you start cuddling and then you start doing things that you know you're not supposed to do. And then after you wonder, why did I do that? Well, if you think back, you set yourself up to fall into something that you didn't want to do. Now, the best plan would be, my parents aren't home, so don't come over. Let's go to a restaurant. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of lights, right? So <laughs> that's a great thing to do. You don't go park your car and then wonder why you started fooling around with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Again, that's setting yourself up to sin, that's setting yourself up to do things that you may not want to do, right? So another thing would be, okay, maybe you have a problem with looking at things on the internet that you shouldn't be looking at on the internet. Well, we could purpose in our heart and make a plan and say, okay, I'm gonna talk to someone about this. Great idea. I'm gonna share with them what's going on. I'm gonna ask that person to hold me accountable. I'm gonna set settings on my computer to make sure that doesn't happen. Maybe on my phone or whatever it may be. And then I'm gonna purpose in my heart that I'm only gonna be on my computer or searching on the internet on my phone when there's people around so something like this will not happen again. Maybe the maybe it's drinking or drugs, whatever it may be, you get the point. We have to plan ahead. Again, we live in the world. So many times we wonder, oh, why did I fall back into it? Because you set yourself in that situation. And many times we hope that will make the right decision, but yet we're still falling a little bit into maybe something that we've done in the past or maybe something that we've struggled with before. So we have to have purpose in our heart. And that's what I love about Daniel is he said, he said here, therefore he requested of the chief of eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So he didn't want to fall into all the king's delicacies and fall into drinking all the wine at the table. So he said to the chief eunuch, he's like, hey man, here, you gotta help me out. And that's what we need to do. Again, again, so many times we wonder why we're doing things that we don't wanna do. Yet we're putting ourselves in those situations. So we have to purpose in our heart what we want for our lives and what we know to be honorable and holy. And it's very, it's, it's in the word of God. I usually have my Bible right here. It's not on the floor. It's in the word of God. If you want to know what a holy and acceptable lifestyle is, it's in the word of God. So we have to read that constantly. We have to get that in our heart and make a plan. Can you say that? Make a plan. I'm not saying you have to become that person of routine. I'm not saying that you have to have tradition, but purpose in your heart. God, I want to be holy. Purpose in your heart. God, I want to be acceptable. God, I want to live a life that's pleasing to you. Help me to not set myself up for failure. Help me to even be that person who's able to hold other people accountable. That's what we have to do. In Daniel 6, 21 to 23, it says, Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angels and shut the lion's mouth so that they not, have not hurt me. Because I was found innocent before him and also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken out of the den. No injury whatsoever was found on him because he believed 
in God. I love that. I love this story because Daniel knew if I read and someone finds me, if I pray and someone finds me, I'm getting thrown into the lion's den. But he had that much trust in the Lord that he didn't care because he said, if I go into the lion's den, I'm going to know that I'm going to get out without injury. Maybe he didn't even know that, whether he got thrown into the lion's den, got eaten alive or not. He was going to stand up for what he believed, but he had faith in God, as we talked about earlier, but also here, I have God is faithful. Why would God do that for Daniel? And I always think about that, like, well, why him? Why would God save Daniel? And it takes me back to that first scripture that said, because Daniel from a young age was faithful to God. Daniel served the Lord his whole life and wasn't going to let anyone or anything stop him from doing that. And I, there's a scripture in Hebrews that says, God is a rewarder of those who diligently serve him. He's a rewarder. That's not a secret. It's not a secret that God wants to bless you. It's not a secret that God wants to reward you. But why Daniel? Because he diligently sought the Lord. And that's the awesome thing. Because Daniel served the Lord, he was rewarded and he was blessed. And that's awesome to know that when serving God, there are benefits. Last week, I talked about Team Jesus. Does anyone remember that? I said, one one person, love it. We're all on Team Jesus. Who was sleeping last week? Oh, two weeks ago. It was Connect two weeks ago. Well, you know what I'm talking about. Team Jesus. It's awesome to know that we're all on the same team. And it's awesome to know that God is also rooting for us and wants us to succeed. When you serve God, you're on team Jesus. So you get thrown into the lion's den or whatever situation it is that you may be going through. God's going to be there for you and God's going to get you through. We just have to know that we know that we know God is faithful. The only crazy thing about it is sometimes when we think that God's faithful, we want him to be faithful in a certain way. So we put stipulations on the situation. Well, God, I need this. This is what I need, how I need it, when I need it. Go. And we expect him to be faithful in the way that we want. And Pastor Lauren, he even mentioned this last Wednesday, and I was talking about it with the girls in discipleship today, that... There's a scripture that says, you know, if you have faith as big as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, you'll be moved, or you can move a mountain or whatever. And Pastor Lauren said that a lot of people get really excited about that until God says, here's the shovel, go and move the mountain. Crazy thought, right? We think, oh, I can just say like, Psh, mountain move, and the mountain's going to be gone, Right? But God says, you can move the mountain, but it might be a lot of work. Maybe he gives you a big shovel or a bulldozer, or maybe he's like, just start digging with your hand. I don't know what it is, but we have to know that God's faithful, but don't put stipulations on his faithfulness. Just know that he's faithful. He's going to get you through. And when he gets you through, you're going to learn so much from what you've been through. But as long as we remember that God is faithful, he's always faithful and he's always going to be there for you. God was faithful to Daniel, and God, in the same turn, is going to be faithful to you. So, Daniel, from the first scripture we read, was faithful to God. God was faithful to Daniel. So, God's faithful to us, again, but we also need to be faithful to him. Can I have the musicians come forward? In Daniel 6, 13 to 14, it says... So they answered and said before the king that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regard for you, O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times daily. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself, and he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. That's awesome to know that the king was so upset at the news. And he wasn't upset at the news that Daniel was worshiping God. 
He was upset at the news that Daniel was going to be thrown into the lion's den, and he wanted to do whatever he could to save Daniel. But the people came back and basically told him, well, the decree's written, there's nothing you can do about it, so get over it, we're throwing him into the lion's den. And the king had to be okay with that, but the king was literally... I love that it says here, he was greatly displeased and he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. I have over this faithful people. Well, what does that mean? If you notice here in the scripture, it talks about how the king labored till the going down of the sun for Daniel to be delivered. The king who wrote the decree didn't even care that Daniel was worshiping his own God. See, when we start serving God and we start walking in his ways, people are going to notice a difference in us. Again, when we're on, I love saying Team Jesus, we're all on the same team, we're all a family, and we all have the same goals in mind, which is to serve and glorify and pursue Jesus with everything we have, and we can start working together. When we're faithful to God, God is faithful to us, and God places people in our lives who are also going to be faithful to us. And that's what I love about Daniel, is he always stood up for everything God. I will be thrown into a furnace, I'll be thrown into the lion's den, whatever it is, I'm never gonna stop serving the Lord. Because a lot of times we think, if I stick up for what I believe, what I believe and what I know to be true, people aren't gonna be friends with me or people aren't gonna start um, accepting me or people aren't gonna be on my side if I stick up for what I believe. But we have to realize when we start serving God, he places people in our lives who are going to be there for you. So many times we think, well, if I do this, I'm gonna be alone. But that's the awesome thing about God is we become this family and you don't have to feel alone anymore. You start realizing, oh my gosh, there's so many awesome people in my life who support me. There's so many awesome people in my life who are helping me pursue everything that God has for me. There's so many people in my life who are fighting for me to succeed. And that's awesome because I don't know about you, but I don't want to do this life alone. I don't want to have my relationship with God just be me, God, and no one else. I want to be like Daniel that if something happens to me and I'm going to be thrown into the lion's den, that you guys are going to be praying that I would be delivered from that situation. And that's who Daniel had on his side because he was faithful to God, God was faithful to him, and God placed people in his lives who were, again, going to be faithful to him. He places people who are there for us and who are going to help us get to that place that he has for us. The last scripture in Ecclesiastes 4.12, it says, Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. You don't have to do this alone. A threefold cord is not easily broken. I think of Daniel. Daniel, God, and the king. There were so many people fighting for Daniel to survive and so many people fighting for Daniel to make it through. And that's what we need here. We need that threefold cord. You, your family, your church family, and God. It's not easily broken. Because when I know, I again, we were just talking about this earlier. I try to do everything on my own because that's just how control freaky I am. But I realize, why am I doing this alone? Because when you try to do things alone, you lose accountability. When you try to do things alone, you can't think of all the different scenarios and then things fall through the cracks. When you try to do things alone, then that's when you are setting yourself up to maybe walk and do things that you didn't want to do. But when you have that accountability around you, when you open yourselves up, because it's really easy because of past experiences, because of past maybe family members who may have hurt you or friends or a boyfriend, a girlfriend who may have hurt you. It's super easy to just like close up and be like, no, I don't want anyone in my life. I'm not going to let anyone in. I'm not going to trust anyone. But we're not, it's not that we don't have to do it alone. We're not called to do this alone. A threefold cord is not easily broken. And I can't stress this enough that this is family. It's time to start opening up to each other and letting 
people hold us accountable and letting people really just says iron sharpens iron and just help bring you to the place that God has called you to. So tonight I'm going to have you guys stand.